there's a handy feature called an actor iterator. So I've set up a console command here to execute this function so that we can demo actor iterators. I have a snippet, UE actor iterator. And it's, there's a little bit of boilerplate type, so that's why I recommend creating a snippet for that. But effectively what it does is it iterates over all the actors in the world of a given type. And so in this case, we're just going to do an a simple test actor and we'll give it the name simple actor iterator and then we can use that which in this case we'll just log so i've created three of these simple actors and i'm going to begin play and what we'll do is run our test actor iterator command which will execute our code and we'll just drop a breakpoint right here all right, if we run the command now, we can see that we hit the breakpoint in our function for our console command, and our iterator is stepping over the actors, and we got one, two, and three. And so that's what an actor iterator is. It's not much more to it. Where would you use it? So you should probably think carefully before using an actor iterator. It's really good for quick tests and console commands. So I'll admit, I don't understand the internals of Actor Iterator super well, but here's what I found. So if we look at the in inside of the Actor Iterator, it appears to be inheriting from this T Actor Iterator base, which is using the curious recurring template pattern of passing in itself. So if we look at Iterator, Actor Iterator base, we can see that there's this operator plus plus, which is used in the Actor Iterator loops when you're iterating over the actors. And it appears that those actors come from this object array. And it seems to me that at this point, the object array is already populated with the actors of that specific class. So if we find references on the objects array, we can see that here it uses this function called get objects of class and it passes in that objects array and the class that we care about. And so this is in the constructor of the actor iterator state here, which is what the actor iterator seems to rely on. And so if we look at this get objects of class, we can see that it's deep in engine code in this uobject hash.h file. If we go to the definition of this, we can see that it calls this function for objects of class. And for all the objects of that class, it adds the results to our array for the actor iterator, the object array. And so if we look in that a little deeper, we can see that it's creating a inline array on the stack for the class to search for. It adds the starting class to it. So I think that's the, the parent class. And then if it includes derived types, it says recursively populate derived classes. And this appears to search all the child derived classes. So it's saying class list to child map listing and for all the child derived classes, it adds that to that array of class types. So this is kind of like reflection. And I believe that's what it's doing here. I haven't looked at this too deeply, but if we back up, we can see that it only does this if it includes derived types. And for this one, for actor iterator, it does include the derived types. And so we're back in actor iterator state code. So let's navigate back. And so the for each object of classes type, after it figures out all the derived classes, it calls this for each object of classes implementation and does some exclusion flags. And then it locks a object list class to object list map. And so this sounds like a list of objects that are of a given class and for all the classes to look for so this is like the class and the derived types i presume it's going to get a list of i guess objects for that specific class and then we're going to iterate over that list and then if it passes some exclusion flag test it's going to do the operation on that object which in our case was just adding it to that results array so if we go back to here for each object of class results that add. And so this is how the actor iterator finds all the actors of the class. And to me, this seems like it's rather expensive. So there's probably a 
a performance hit and using Activate Aider. I haven't actually tested it. I just presume it is not performance to use them. And so this is why I personally only use these for debug code, unless it's some really one-off bespoke thing. But I try to keep them as debug code, to be honest. And so if you do need something like an actor iterator for gameplay code that is performance critical, what you could do is have a game state component thrown on the game state. And so when your actor starts up, the, the base class that is, it could on begin play, ask the word for the game state, and ask the game state for the game state component, which is some sort of manager or system, and register it with that system. And then on end play, it can do the same thing, ask the word for the game state, and from the game state, get the game state component, which is the the system component and remove it from that list. And so that way you can do real quick iteration without needing to do all this, this reflection boulder plate stuff. And no, I haven't actually profiled it to know if that's any faster or not fast, but this just seems slow. And so, and so if you need to use an activator in gameplay code, that's perhaps some investigation you should follow up on. But nevertheless, these activators are really handy for writing really quick test commands. And that's the primary use case I have for them. And so I wanted to make sure you knew that it existed and potentially to Use them for your tests, but also know that maybe don't use them in gameplay code unless you know for sure that it's not going to be a performance issue. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and until next time.